And hi everyone. Today is September the 13th, 2021. And uh, just wanted to do a short video for you today. I'm in the process of putting together um, the next Castaneda um, interpretation, which will be his uh, fourth book, Tales of Power. I'll have that up for that'll be a, that one will be a free voice video. I'll put that up on the weekend. Um, so I'm in the process of doing that. But while I was going through some other things, I just wanted to share a couple of ideas. Those being the movie, The Thirteenth Floor, which I watched a couple of days ago with a friend. Uh, again, uh, I hadn't seen it for eight or nine years. I talked about it, but I hadn't seen it for a while, and it's good. And I don't want to go into the too much in the whole simulation thing of that movie, but I want to bring in a couple of other topics that might get missed when dealing with with the movie. Uh, there was a, so, for those who don't know, The 13th Floor was a movie that came out in 1999. So, first of all, the, the timing of the movie is really, the year of the movie is very important. Um, as, in fact, the dates of the movie are important. So, in 1999, when you've got this artificial reality um, presentation being made in movies, you've got uh, Dark City, which I think came out in 1998. Uh, the Matrix came out in 1999. This movie came out in 1999. And I can't remember, did The Truman Show come out in 2000? So you've got you've got four sort of key um, movies that are discussing the world as, as some sort of simulated artificial reality, all coming out at the exact same time, uh, just before 2001, the 2001 experience that we just had the anniversary of, 20-year anniversary of. And I'll be talking about the 20-year 20 year strangeness as well. Um, so that's the first thing to look at is you have to examine why why do we have all of those movies wanting to come out at roughly the exact same time? So what is the what is the energetic structure right then that wants the world to question reality? That's step one. Now when we go into the 13th floor, which I don't want to Put. Uh, I don't want to dissect the movie because I'd rather. It's interesting. Uh, you can watch it yourself if you can track it down somewhere, and um, I'll just let you watch it on your own. It's a very unique depiction. It comes from. It comes from a book, uh, a novel that came out in the 1960s called Simul Simulacrum Three. I think is the name of the title of the book, and the novel is about. A marketing research company in the 60s who decides to create a simulation of the world so that they can test out all of their marketing strategies in the simulation to see how they want to, in a sense, run their marketing propaganda in the real world. Uh, it became a German movie in 1973. That movie is still on the internet. I'm gonna, I haven't watched it. I will watch it. I think it's called Bird on a Wire, and it's more similar to the novel than what the 13th floor became. The 13th floor took some of those ideas and. Um, Altered them a bit. Drop my pen. So we've got the movie comes out in 1999, and 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 the the <clears throat> what you've got just for the sake of our discussion is you've got three levels of simulation in a sense. You've got what you think is the real world of 1999. You've got the simulated world of 1937 Los Angeles, which has been made by the people in 1999. And then the people in 1999 find out that they too are a simulation of a world that's somewhere above them, which we give the date of 2024. So we've got first the three dates. So we've got, we now we've never been told that the movie takes place in 1999. So we don't know that. We don't know the date that the actual movie is taking place in. We, everyone will assume it's 1999 because that's when the movie came out. And it seems 1990, 1999-ish, right? But we, the two dates that we are presented, one is 1937. And so why exactly is 1937 Los Angeles wanted to be the, the focus point of that, of that date? I, I'm just mentioning that because the, the date of, the, of the, what you're being told is the non-simulated world, that reality is shown in, in 2024. And what's really interesting is when you you see the 2024 reality, it is semi-futuristic, you might say, right? That's the best way to describe it. It's semi-futuristic. And if they're 
if they were trying to implant in people's minds that when the movie came out in 1999, that in 2024, the world is going to look the way we're depicting it at the end of this movie, the jump is too far. The jump is too far for that kind of um, structural technology and et cetera for the world to be existing in. So it's, it's indicating, it's already indicating it's indicating, first of all, a false, um, a false idea of the future. That's the first thing that's being presented in the, in the ending of the movie. But even more interesting is the date of 2024. I mean, if you were going to, if you were going to try to show a futuristic, a little bit futuristic world, you'd make the year 2084, 2140. You know, you would pick a date very far in the future of your current movie. And you say, oh, you got 150 years to get there. Logically, that makes more sense. But they want it. They they want the date of 2024 presented, and um, 2024 I think is going to be a very important year. Somehow that I, I wonder if that's the year the portal opens up. Because if you remember the Deagle site, if you've ever if you had, if you had downloaded uh, some of the things not download taken screenshots of the Deagle website from way back. I caught that two or three years ago when it was showing the likely, uh, it's, it's a military contractor site. It was showing the likely populations of the world, uh, all the countries in the world in 2025. This came out in, yeah, I think 2017, 2018. And uh, <clears throat> they were showing 30, 40, 50% reductions of population for the Western countries. Um, so they were saying something was up. Uh, that all that stuff, all that stuff on that site has now been taken down. The site still exists, but that information is gone. You had to have taken screenshots um, to have seen it. Maybe somewhere, maybe sometime on Free Voice, I'll, I'll I can repost those. I won't repost them here on this platform, but I might repost them on Free Voice, and we can have a talk about what's in those, what's in those um, original presentations. But anyway, the point being. Uh, 2024 is one year before the 2025 date that Deagle was presenting. Remember that they live, the movie they live is taking, it says that by the year 2025, everything will be in place. Everything is, is finished. The, the sort of the things are, I don't know if the movie takes place in 2025, but the movie, the, the point was that the year 2025 is also presented in they live as a key, as the key year where, where the overlords take control. And here we've got, I, I missed it on the first times I watched the movie, but here's the 13th floor talking about the year 2024. That that's how it's, that's the date that it's really pumping into your mind. And in fact, the newspaper, when he picks it up uh, at the end of the movie to try to figure out what year he's in, it says it was a June 21st, um, 2024, which is, of course, the summer solstice. And the, as anyone knows, solstices are markers. The, the, they're, they're, they're time markers. Some country or some some civilizations use the uh, the spring equinox um, as their year marker date. Most northern countries use the winter solstice, which is why we wind up sort of having a date of January, this goofy date of January the first as our start of our calendar. It's supposed to be the winter solstice. It's supposed to be the exact marker date when one year ends and a new year begins. Uh, but a lot of places use the summer solstice. The summer solstice, like particularly ancient Egypt, Egypt used the summer solstice as their as their year point marker because that was close to the flood of the Nile and the rising of the star Sothis. Um, Sirius, Sirius rose on that particular day, which they claimed Isis was rising, and, and the Nile flooded. And so that was how they marked their new year. They used it by the summer solstice. So the fact that they're presenting summer solstice 2024 in this movie as kind of like the key it's like because that's what happened the the character douglas hall in a sense portal jumps from the one simulation to the supposed real world which you know, would be another simulation um the point being that what's the story about 2024 and that date what's the what's the what's the reasoning so other so many other focuses have been on the year 2025 so is 2024 our portal and particularly right maybe right around the summer solstice 2024 maybe that is our portal when you could leave this reality 
you could leave this simulation. You could you, you might be able to alter it, transform it, transform yourself. Uh, I don't know. But maybe that's part of what the markers and, and all of this garbage we're going through. I've talked about this a few times. All this garbage we're going through is not just about trying to, you know, create a robot race. There's something more. It, 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 there's a blocking. There's a blocking element to it. And the question is, what is it trying to block uh, people from seeing? What is it trying to block humans from? And, and the only thing you, you, you would go to this kind of lengths to block is a doorway where you you can see the simulation and see yourself for what it is and do something about it. And you can actually either alter the simulation, change the simulation, stop the simulation, leave the simulation, right? So I'm just throwing all that out. That that's, that stuff is normally missed when you watch the 13th floor, as, there's, as there tends to be such a focus on the whole argument of the simulations. And I really like one scene in the movie, I'm not going to talk about when it is, but it links very much to when, when Castaneda is talking about the lines, seeing the, what is it called, the lines of the world or the fibers of the world. I'd have to get back to, to reading that, that particular chapter of the book, of that particular book again. But when he, he talked about see, when, he, when you could see past um, uh, uh, material reality to that which creates the reality, he called it the seeing the lines of the world, and that that that's I think that scene in Thirteenth Floor, if you watch the movie or have watched the movie, is very uh, inspired by Carlos Castaneda like thinking. And again, the movie comes out in 1999. Castaneda has just died in 1998. It is, of course, quite possible that in the process of producing and putting the movie together and uh, and. Uh, whatever that the producer slash writer slash whoever could have, they, they, they would have lived in, in Los Angeles, just like Castaneda. He was doing lectures at the time. It's, it is possible there was some sort of connection, interaction, or at least influence in into this, this particular movie. So I'm just throwing that out. I'm not saying there is. I'm just saying it's, it is a possibility. Um, um, speaking of simulations, one of the... Um, one of my commenters, uh, one of the last comments that just came up on the video prior to this one, Castaneda, uh, one talked about a video that came out recently by Vanessa VA, and I'll put the link below, where she is taking clips of different people talking about simulations. And I've only listened to the, the first part of it, the first guy who's talking about seeing your reality and, and testing your the, the, the belief of your senses, and he goes through discussing using a banana and, uh, and this idea of seeing how you come to believe that the banana in your hand is a real thing. You know, what is it? What is the sense interpretations is telling you it's real and why are you believing it? It's a very, very interesting uh, discussion. I haven't heard the rest of the, of the video, but I'm going to link it below because it does link to this whole thing of simulated worlds and simulated realities and um, understanding how we perceive. Which is again, this is this is a huge element that we are we as humans uh, are under, and this is oh, I'll get to that too. I'm just gonna write that down. Is of course that we we have been trained to misperceive. We have been uh, hypnotized in a sense. We've been conditioned to misperceive, to perceive error in error, and a huge a huge amount of the work is just to let go of the conditioning so that you perceive reality uh, in a more clear truthful way that's just a huge part of it and there's so many steps to that it's like you reach you reach another step and you think now i see everything now i see what's really going on well no you see another, there's more step more and more and more steps you have to keep going to drop more and more misperception um it's another thing that a lot of this i've been thinking about is is really revealing and that is um again like i mentioned uh, there's how many people are really human in this reality Again, you see 7 billion people, 7 billion shells, 7 billion, as they call them, 13 floor units walking around. How many are truly conscious soul beings, you might say, and how, how, how many are soul men, and how many are yeah, non-player characters slash units slash just things that are populating the world or things that are there to give the impression of Reality is is how it's presented. That reality is as big as it's presented. There's as much of it as as it's being presented. A lot of what's going on now is really making question how many 
the, 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 the quickness of the choices being made makes you wonder, is it really humans making these choices or are they as 13th floor would call them units? Um, another thing that brought this up to me was this 20 year uh, anniversary, you might say. It's weird because you celebrate an anniversary. It's, I don't know what you would call this. Uh, 20 year, 20 year remembrance of, of, of craziness or something. I don't know. But what's really started to notice me is that lately is that the energy, the energy now is very similar to the energy of 20 years ago. And a lot of the, a lot of the things I was feeling or going through or experiencing in 2001, like throughout that year, I've noticed I've experienced similar things again this year. There, there's been some, there's been some overlap of these two years, 2001, 2021, even to the point that we've got <clears throat> the situation in Afghanistan changed for whatever reason in right, 2001, and it's back. Everything, it's like it's all back exactly as it was. And and I'm wondering, I'm wondering if, if these 20 years have been like a really bizarre energetic loop in some weird way, and we're, and, and we're kind of, energetically, we're back in 2001 all over again, somehow. I, 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 I'm not saying I have this down by any, it's just something that's come up, that um, I've noticed this weird 20-year loop. And then the next thing I thought about was, just for some reason, I've been thinking about some baseball stuff, and every one, every 20, if you go back every 20 years, there's some very strange events, historical events that are going on baseball-wise, very unique things. Okay, we have the season this year. We don't know how the season's going to end. But if you go back 20 years to 2001, that's the Barry Bonds 73 home run season, and the, the Yankees are in the World Series, but they lose. You go back 20 years before that, 1981, that's the year of the big first baseball strike where they actually lost a huge number of games, and they had to split the, remember, they had to split the season, and they... They had a first half winner and a second half winner, and they had this weird playoff. And uh, the Yankees were in the World Series, and they lost. Lost the Dodgers. You go back 20 years before that, you go to 1961, and now you're talking. Uh, that's the year Roger Maris hit 61 home runs, big breaks Babe Ruth's uh, record, and the Yankees are in the World Series. This time they win. You go back 20 years before that. Now you're in 1941, and it's the year of Ted Williams. 406 season, the last 400 batting average, Joe DiMaggio's 56 game hitting streak, Yankees get to the World Series and win. You go back 20 years before that, and you're in, you're in 1921. That's the season Ruth hits 59, right? Did he hit, did he hit the 59 in 1920 or 1921? I think, anyway, I think that's the year he batted 393 and hit 59 home runs or something. Um, you know, stag the, 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 the staggering numbers of, of Ruth of the early 1920s. You go back 20 years before that, and that's the formulation of the modern baseball structure as we know it, of American League, National League. Um, so I, so that just, it just came to mind that these, these odd 20-year connections, and I mean, I guess you could do it. I mean, probably you could try to do 2017, and then you go back to 1997 and 19. 77. I'm sure you, if you really looked hard enough, you would find connections. But these connections, these this 20-year feeling is there. This 20-year feeling that's sort of this continuous loop that we're kind of seemingly in and, and returning to. Not just that we're in it, where it's like we're, we're back to this, almost to the start of it somehow. Um, notice for yourselves. Do you, do you, can you notice that this particular, if you think back to 2001 and what you were doing and the things in your life and experiences you were having and whatever. Do you, do you notice similarities to what's happened in your life this year? Or, or is that just like me? Am I the only one seeing sort of the similarity of 20 years ago? Curious. That's one reason I'm bringing this video up. Um, I had one more thing I was going to say. What the heck was that now? I got into that. 20 year period and I've forgotten what it was I was going to mention. Um, right, the other, the other, one of the other ideas was <clears throat> um, in the movie The 13th Floor, you have this ability of 
those beings, those beings with consciousness in the simulation above the next level up, who made, the ones who made the simulation, have the ability to put their consciousness into a person that they call a unit. They have a specific unit that kind of looks like them, and they can put their consciousness into that unit and take over take over the unit for a short period of time. Um, when they when the consciousness is brought out, that person is basically has an hour or two of missing time, and they they have no mem they have almost no memories of anything. Maybe you could see that in the older man he could he could. He had some vague recollections, but it's like they're way back in his mind because you might say a different consciousness was living the experience. And I wonder um, when you hear of the um, how many people have had the missing time experience. You know, they're driving their car, they see the light in the sky, the or the weird orb or whatever, and then it's two hours later and they don't know they don't know what's happened for two hours. They don't know where they've been or what they've done. Um, and this this is tended to try to uh, verify what's known as the uh, abduction scenario, right? But now when you watch the 13th floor, this other this other possibility is that consciousness was taken over for a few hours by someone outside of the simulation who has connected to, you know, us and has taken over our form for a few hours for whatever reason they've done that. Um... I'm not saying that's true, but I think everybody's a lot, a lot of people, not everybody, a lot of people have had experiences of where they've, you know, an hour or two is just gone. They don't remember where they were or what happened, or they they knew they were some they were some one place, and then all of a sudden they were, you know, they were someplace else, and they don't know how they got there. So it's also that element of it <clears throat> from the 13th floor, something to really contemplate of are a lot of these things that are being experienced in our reality because this is that's one of the things one of the first things i read when i started reading about shamans before i'd ever met any native medicine people myself is a lot of the literature that existed at the time talked about that the medicine traditions of the of the the, of the native world talked about that this being a, a mirror world or a shadow world that it's not just it's not just generated on its own, it's generated as a mirror from something else. It's generated as a shadow from something else. It's generated as an upside down inversion of something else, which is a really good example of a simulation of that there, there, there's, there is something that is that had that this has been modeled on, that it's not just it's not just accidentally or, or put together sort of in its own in its own um, construct that it's constructed from a template and um, so some of these things that's why the, the, the 13th floor brings up a lot of these um, concepts again and so um, yeah I guess I'll leave that there I guess it was good just because I say I've been going through starting to go through tales of power and tales of power by Castaneda is a very is a is a book that really does start even just reading it you're you're shifting reality slightly and you're shifting almost like you're shifting dimensions while you read the book there's a slight there's something in the language that is already yeah just shifting perception and shifting consciousness just from reading it so um, because there's so much in the book uh, unlike uh, Journey to Ixalan which I could kind of pretty much remember based on the on the on the chapter titles and I could just kind of remember a lot of what's there which is a skim read i have to read tales of power a little more closely in order to do a proper presentation of it because there's there's some pretty pretty deep concepts in there and i'd like to at least when i present them present them somewhat uh, clearly from my side to you so it doesn't come out to, too confusing at least that i can at least try to share how I've come to understand what some of these terms and concepts mean and try to put it in a in a particular way of language that um, can at least uh, be transferred fairly well. Okay, that's today's video. Um, some stuff on the 13th floor and, and, and these things that it brought up. Um, yeah, next video will be Tales of Power. That'll be on Free Voice sometime, yeah, in about a week. And uh, when that's up, I'll do a short little video here to let you know about that. And um, 
thanks again. We'll see you all soon. Cheers.